Alford. Let's speak to Dr. Alan Watkins, a neuroscientist who runs a management consultancy and is in Southampton. And, and I know that the, the mind, the human mind and rage is one of the things that you, you think a lot about, Alan. Uh, absolutely. And good afternoon, Jeremy. Uh, I think what's gone on here is people sit in their car, they're in the insular bubble, they feel safe and secure. An accident happens and it immediately triggers their brain into and activates what we call the threat system. Uh, and so it's as though you've taken a knife to somebody. Uh, so both parties have got out. Uh, the tussles occurred. That's uh, inflamed the situation. Uh, and then uh, the scenes proceeded as you've been described here. Mm. And it, we don't know what the, the driver who appears to be the victim here, who was backed into an attack with a shovel, may have said something appalling to the other guy. We don't know. Absolutely we don't know, but it's likely that something was said. And what happens in those circumstances uh, is it creates biological chaos in both parties' system. The consequence of biological chaos is you basically have a DIY lobotomy you basically lose your frontal cortex, which is all the smart thinking. And so people do stupid things in those situations, as, as that guy has done. Uh, now, the reason this happens, it's a, it's a survival mechanism. I mean, 200,000 years ago, this is the mechanism that saved your life when you bumped into a bear in the middle of the wilderness. Um, you know, you don't need smart thinking in the sort of threat situation. You actually need to dumb down your thinking. You need to go binary, fight, flight, or play dead. But here we are, a couple hundred thousand years later, we've still got the basic same software in our brain. Uh, we've got a sort of 200,000-year-old software, and we've never had a software upgrade, and it's getting in the way. And some of us have been on the receiving end of road rage. Most people probably have at some point. The, what do you do? If somebody's brain goes into that binary thing, and they, they can hurt you, I was told the best thing is to shout, how's your mum? Because it bounces them out of it. Well, um, it, it, it may do, but it also may inflame them, uh, you know, uh, because if you're shouting something to somebody who's got no frontal cortex, uh, they're often, you know, very sensitive. Uh, anything could trigger them. So the best thing, really, uh, two strategies is to retreat from the situation and not inflame it further. Uh, and uh, also look at yourself. So the guy uh, who probably inflamed it in the first place, you know, you've got to look at himself. He doesn't then come back with his own shovel. Um, so it can go from bad to worse if you're not careful. But you're retreating encourages an aggressor, doesn't it? That's the trouble. Uh, it, it may be. Because the response they want. Yeah. And this, this, this incident, the guy retreats into his cab, so the man breaks the window with a shovel and tries to hit him inside the cab. Well, all these strange things happened because probably both parties have got their, their, their brain shut down. They both had a lobotomy, and they're both doing bizarre and unpredictable things. Uh, ultimately, in society, we need to learn. The good news is we can learn to control, develop the ability to control our biology so our brain doesn't shut down under pressure. This is a basic human phenomenon. It can happen to any of us. Uh, and we're all at the mercy of this type of phenomena. This is an extreme example, but you and I were talking no, no more than about a month ago about a punch-up outside a UKIP meeting, exactly the same brain shutdown. So all people are at risk to this until we start to learn how to control our response in the face of a threat. We, we, if we can control ours, but controlling the, the other parties is interesting, isn't it? And uh, I, just on, on the thing of what you say or what you shout, I had a friend who was driving, he was driving a soft top car with the roof down, which made him rather vulnerable anyway. He got into a road situation. The other driver came to, with a weapon to hit him. And from the other side of the road, someone shouted, if you hit him, I'm a witness. And that was enough to rewire him into rational thinking I don't want to lose my job and be arrested, and he was gone. So that, you know, there's sometimes you can plug back in the attacker's rational brain with the right sentence. Uh, quite possibly. Uh, I mean, Stephen Fry uh, has some very funny examples of when he was being bullied at school of the things that he used to say uh, of a sexual nature that would diffuse the situation. Um, so you might be able to sort of prompt them out of it, but uh, the risk is that's equally likely to inflame them further. It's very unpredictable. When there's no frontal cortex, both parties are very unpredictable. Ultimately, as a species, we need to learn to deal with these kind of threatening situations much more effectively. Uh, so sometimes it can, you know, get worse. Uh, we actually have game shows, The Weakest Link, and these type of things actually play on the humorous side of this thing. When you put somebody under pressure, ask them a simple question, they blurt out a stupid answer, and it's funny and we all laugh. But it's all the same phenomena, really, Jeremy. Uh, and as human beings, we need to learn to control our biology so we're not 
at risk of having these terrible situations happen to us. Thank you very much, Dr. Alan Watkins, neuroscientist who runs a management consultancy, speaking to us from Southampton. Maybe it's your problem, the road rage, or maybe it's the problem of the guy who came at you. And how do you deal with it? Maybe I'm foolish, maybe I'm blind, thinking 